Hello everybody, welcome friends. Uh, thank you very much for uh, taking the opportunity of coming to uh, uh, watch these videos. Uh, it's into the new year maybe, or no, it's probably about New Year's Eve. But anyway, Happy New Year to you all. Uh, today's episode consists of sorting out the um, plywood. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to sand it briefly uh, and then treat it. And then on the, ex on the rear of that, we're going to put some sound deadening, which is also a, uh, a damp proof membrane as well. So it's a dual purpose, even though I've put some on the, uh, 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 the interior of the boat, I'm also now going to put it on the uh, back of the uh, ply. And then that's going to be ready to go on this, uh, on the interior of this boat. So without further ado, should we get on with the episode? Hello everybody and welcome back to How Hard Can It Be? Uh, this is where I, Phil Murphy, is trying to uh, restore a Nauticus 27 foot cruiser boat. Uh, if you've been watching the previous episodes, you'll know that we've now got these uh, wood rubbing straights on the side of the boat. And now, hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to concentrate on getting the uh, fly in place. So, this is the first piece that needs to be fully fitted properly. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize some of this, uh, well, it's a flooring product actually, made by Duralay. Uh, it's meant to go under LVT, uh, which is luxury vinyl tiles. Uh, so what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm going to take a template of this, which is now fully sanded and I've also um, va matte varnished it. Uh, as you can see, that is going to be the final colour. I don't know whether the camera picks that up or not. But it's not over yellow. Uh, I'm happy with it. And it'll also protect it from any um, drip marks or whatever may, may occur. So I'm going to put a, this on top of that foil. Uh, it's very heavy, this stuff, actually. And I'm going to um, draw it out and cut it exact and then I'm going to glue it to the back of this so then I can put the whole section on the um, bow of the boat the bulkhead so that's the theory I'm hoping it's going to work so I'll get this trimmed up well I'm going to mark it off first and then we'll we'll go from there um, just to show you close up what this product's like it's got a foil top to it um, it's about, what uh, depth is that? It's about four or five mil thick, I would thought. Uh, and then it's got sort of a, a very f sort of whitish membrane on that. Uh, and then it's got a dense um, sort of rubber product. Uh, it's mold resistant uh, and moisture resistant. So that's, uh, that's an ideal uh, product and it's quite weighty as well. Okay, so that piece of cell tape. So what I'll do is I will spray adhesive, uh, I'll use some contact adhesive, uh, spray it on there, and I'll use some contact adhesive and spray it on there. I'll let it tack off very briefly. And then uh, I shall place that on top of that. Uh, there's about seven and a half square meters on the roll with this particular uh, product, and I think it was around forty-two pounds uh, for the roll. Uh, I'm guessing that that might do most of what I want, but um, if not, I'll have to go obviously buy another roll. Uh, depends on the size of your boat, but it should go quite a long way. Oh, how's it 
get it all over you. Press down. Okay, so it is lipping over on certain parts of it. I'm not overly bothered because I can trim it off. But basically you get that on the back uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll stick that into, uh, into position. So I shall get my knife, uh, wherever that is, there it is. We'll just trim off the end. So there you have it. One sound deadened insulated piece. The first one to go off my boat. Shall we put it on? This is really heavy and, it, and what and what this has done is it has created a really solid pliable piece of furniture so my theory is is that I'm going to just put this on on the back for now I know it's a snug fit so I'm thinking well why would I want to just like permanently fit it it would be nice just to be able to maybe on an annual basis be able to just pop that off rather than putting a porthole in there uh, with a sort of an opener to, uh, and disfigure this piece um, it'd be perhaps a good idea not to fully fit this so I'm just going to wing it for a bit and just see how it looks when I've got the that bit in and that bit in um, what I'm going to do I'm going to do exactly what I've done with this and that's stick this stuff to the ply because it, it makes it really uh, well, it gives it some weight for one, um, and I'm just going to see how it works. So, anyway, let's get this on. It should, by rights, just slide into the place. That's going to jam it in. Oh. Juicy job. That's going to. Um, jam it in this bit and then obviously that is going to jam it in and that's going to jam it in as well so is it necessary to fix it i don't think so i think uh, i think that'll be all right as it is uh, i'm just going to uh, spray it down by the way um it is uh, foil side down that's the way you put this product down. So wherever the cold's going to attack from, the foil is there to um, obviously bounce it back. So that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to um, put this sound deadening down now in sections. They don't have to be over critical joint-wise. Right, so what I've done now is I've got the... the um, this Duralay into position. It's not stuck down and there's nothing happened to it just yet because I'm in the process of getting this mocked up. So that has now lifted up by about, I don't know, about three to four mil, I would, sorry, five mil, I think, from memory. So that's gonna make a difference to the size of this piece, which is the reason why I wanted to get that on in the first place. So I'll slide this into position and get it in such a way that all the areas that I want to look neat will be neat that's hanging over you can see what I mean by uh, uh, this piece being bigger because it needs to be uh, so basically what I will do is I'll make sure that this this area here is nice and straight and there's no real major gaps and there isn't because if you Obviously when that piece goes on, imagine that being the wood, 
you'll end up with, um, hopefully, that sort of an effect where you won't see these gaps here. So I think I'm going to go with that. Just tuck that underlay underneath. Let's double check it one more time. Okay. So now I'm going to make a line underneath. Right. All being well, I want sufficient there to be able to confidently cut. And there we have it, yes we do. Okay, so the next bit is to uh, get this trimmed. You don't really need to see that. Um, I shall trim it and then put it back on and we'll see the state of play then. So stay tuned. I have learnt that never take your jig all the way, especially if you come into a point part of a piece of wood, never take it to the end because the vibration will break your corner off, uh, especially when I'm not on a flat surface like I'm not. Uh, so, hopefully I won't damage it. Right, so at this stage, there's nothing much we can do with that now. Obviously, you can see it's in a rough state, uh, but this will all get sanded off down there. Then I'm going to go over with my sander with a 160 grit um, just to get rid of these footprints from uh, years gone by. And then that will then get treated just like that piece did, just like you saw. So that's what I'm going to do. So that for now is job done for that one. Right, okay, slight change of plan. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to briefly show you how to prepare one of these um, sections. And the reason for doing that is if then John can take away the camera and edit all the film that I've been doing while he's been away and that makes a lot of sense. So we'll just go from start to finish um, sanding and uh, treating it and then I'll just put it to one side but that'll give you an, an idea of what I'm going to do with every single piece that's going on in that boat. So as you know we've just cut that out, it's rough cut and we've got lots of bits so I'm just getting a piece of sandpaper, uh, I'm not particularly interested in what grade it is and I'm just going to take off the fur like so, that's okay. Right, okay, so on to the next step. Sander. So this is a 120 grit, very fine, all we're doing is just taking off um, any dirt from the four years that I've had this um, piece of wood, as you can see we've got footprints, we've got a little couple of score marks there. Hang on Phil, bring it back down. Got it? Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to give it a light sanding. You've got to remember that this is extremely thin oak veneer that's on top of this ply. So you can't really go right gun ho into it. 
Um, but if you just look and just make sure that you've got as much out of it as you possibly can. The footprint was around about there, I think, from memory. It was. That has now disappeared. Um, my pencil line and my marks, they've all gone. Uh, that's in the grain, that's in the grain. So that's now ready for the uh, matte varnish. Uh, tack rags. And it just takes up, as you will see very shortly. As you can see, quite a lot of dust on there. So we just simply turn it over the varnish. And the varnish is very watery. So let's give it a quick whisk around. Was that a chisel, yeah, that you used? A very old chisel, yes. So, my favourite tool of all time is my sponge. I love using this sponge. It's like a little revelation. All these brushes I've bought, and I haven't used one yet. Well, I have when I came to put the paint on, but just a simple household sponge is brilliant. So all I do, I put a little tiny tip, as you can see, that much, nothing, nothing outrageous on my sponge and then basically clean it or act like you're cleaning it. Wow. So you don't get any brush marks because the sponge act takes all the um, access off as, at the same time as you're putting it on. Just takes it off as you can see. Look at that. Now with a brush, I'd still be here doing this business, but I've already gone ha virtually halfway. And there we have it. It's so simple. Now I will do the reverse, but I'm, it's not over critical this day. Obviously I can't flick it over because I'll end up with a load of dust on it. So I will let that dry and then I will flick it over tomorrow and I will give the other side a coat. So then it's got a barrier both sides. Um, but no brush strokes, nothing. It's as simple as that. How quick was that? Lightning speed. Lightning. So yeah, that is my favourite tool. Obviously John comes close second. Um, but... Are you saying I'm a tool? Sorry? Are you saying I'm a tool? Part time tool, because you're always away. Be nice. Right, there we are. Voila, job done. So, John will disappear with the camera. I will carry on and trim all those other bits and I will get them all to this stage. And then hopefully tomorrow we will continue filming, placing them in, in situ. Okay, so I think this is a wrap for this episode. So just let's recap on what we've done. We put insulation on here, on the back section there. Um, I couldn't help myself. I had to put this on top of here just to see how it looked. I'm so excited for the next episode. So that is basically, I'm just trimming that in. That's the final section. So that'll get pinned on. But for now, as you can see, that is all nicely um, underco uh, undercoated, uh, insulated. Uh, of course, the ply has got its own uh, insulation on the back of it as well. So once that's on, uh, I think we're good to go. I think there's going to be enough of an air gap as well 
in order to um, keep the crucial bit down, which is the condensation. That's the secret about boats, is having ventilation all the way around. So, uh, so I think we'll call that a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and like, uh, and I shall see you in the next episode. Bye for now.